Hey guys, it's me again, the wrist guy. I hope you're doing well and uh, welcome to this new video. Today I would like to talk to you about the Rolex Kermit or as you may know it, uh, Starbucks. This Rolex stands for everything that is going a little bit wrong or at least weird in this whole watch game. This watch triggers something in me that the watch itself is not even faulty about. This is the new reference. It is the 126610LV, I guess, something like that. It is the very new 41 millimeter Submariner. This one is the uh, anniversary model with the green bezel and the black dial. This is basically the new version of uh, old and beloved Kermit. It features a 41 millimeter case, which is mostly 41 millimeters on paper, but not really on the wrist, but let's talk about that later. The case is fully brushed on the top and fully polished on the sides, as almost any Rolex watch is up to date. The bracelet is the famous Oyster bracelet. It is one of the best, if not the best bracelet on the market, to be honest. It's not the most shiny one. It's not the one with the most uh, kind of crazy uh, manufacturing process or something like that, but it is definitely one of the most durable, one of the most comfortable, and it has a fully adjustable, uh, I don't know, micro adjustment. On the wrist, it feels weird. And let me tell you why. If you look at most of the content out there, uh, they will say that the 41 millimeter uh, case is not indeed 41 millimeters. It is basically the same size, just wears differently. In my opinion, it's not really larger, but it wears very differently. So the older subs, they were a bit broader. The lugs were very broad. The whole watch had a, quite a rectangular fit on the wrist, if you know what I mean. When it comes to this new one, they slim down the lugs and they widen the bracelet. So the watch uh, has lost its rectangular profile. It is more elongated, if you know what I mean. So when you wear it, it feels like the luck to luck has been increased, which is actually not the case, but it feels like it. And the bracelet is thicker, which takes away the elegance and the flexibility of this watch and the versatility, which makes this watch a lot more rugged and rough wearing. It, it is more of a tool watch right now. I would definitely not wear this to a suit or something like that. I wouldn't have worn the, the older one to a suit. That's a different question. But in my opinion, the older one was quite a bit more versatile than this new one. This new one is a little bit more rugged and rough. It doesn't seem that refined anymore, to be honest. The class, which has been gigantic and enormous in the past model is even bigger now because it is a lot more wider. It is one of the best claps in the business, but I believe it's too big and it's too clunky. Don't get me wrong, guys. I really like this watch. The Submariner is one of the absolute icons in the watch world, but it stands for everything that is going wrong, in my opinion, because this watch has a retail price of around 9,000 euros here in Europe and a resale value of about 17,000 euros, so it is almost twice the price. This watch is a very good watch for 9,000 euros. This watch is also a very good watch for 10,000 euros or maybe 11,000 euros, but it's not a very good 18, 17,000 euro watch. When it comes to 18 or 17,000 euros, you get into AP territory, AP retail price territory, which is a whole different <laughs> topic. But um, you know what I mean? And people just get crazy over this watch. I believe the older Hulk has a lot more character to it. It is a lot classier than this one. It is cool, but it is just the new shiny model and everyone has its eyes on it and everyone wants to have the newer one, everyone wants to have the shinier one. But the watch is not worth 17 grand, if you ask me. It is worth nine grand, 10 grand, maybe 11, as I said, but it is not worth almost 20 grand. But on the other hand, who defines what is worth or what's not? Because people want this watch, people buy this watch at the resale value and that's how the watch gets its price. One thing I really like about this watch is the bezel action. Uh, listen to that. It is maybe the smoothest bezel I have had in my entire life. This is incredible. On one hand, you really have this tactile clicks. You can really measure up to a minute. And on the other hand, you have this incredible fluidity between the clicks. It feels like it is lubricated enough so you can turn it very easily. But on the other hand, it is so tactile that you can really measure up to a minute and you do not pass the minute or something like that. It is very easy to align and very easy to operate. So again, when it comes to this watch, please keep in mind, it is just a plain old sports watch, stainless steel dive watch. I know it's from Rolex, I know it's from the almighty crown, but please keep in mind that this is a simple freehand and a date 
watch and it is not worth 18 or 17 grand. So guys, hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to the channel to have more of this content and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay healthy and have a good one. Thank you.